Today I'm going to be talking about how distance, placement, and size play into perspective of backgrounds. So anytime we're doing a background, we want to start with making a horizon line and a vanishing point. Now, if you're outside, the horizon line is going to be more towards the middle. If you're inside, the horizon line is going to be more towards the bottom. Outside, the perspective is going to be in the middle because you can see much farther. Whereas inside, you have walls that are cutting off your ability to see great distances. So the, the horizon line is going to be towards the bottom. So I'm going to draw a picture from an outside perspective. So I'm going to put the horizon line right in the middle. And remember, a horizon line is where the sky meets the ground. Next, I'm going to put in a vanishing point because we are human and our eyeballs are on the front of our faces. We see out straight. We usually don't look straight up or straight down. So the vanishing point is going to be in the middle. So this is going to be a one point perspective. You can do this with two point perspective as well, but right now we're going to focus on one point perspective. So in drawings, you want to start with what's closest and work your way back. Reason being that when you're drawing something, you can't layer over something that you've already drawn. If you would want to do something over the top of something that you've already drawn, you'd have to erase it or with Drawing in particular, you work from what is closest to you backwards, whereas in painting, you'd start backwards and layer forwards. So we're going to focus on the foreground first. The foreground is what's closest to you. So considering that the vanishing point is the farthest away from you, the foreground is going to be on the edges of the paper. Because most things are on the ground, you would start by going with the edges and really big or right in front of you. But because we want to show distance, we need to leave this area open so that we can see the things that are farther away. So the foreground is typically going to be on the edges of the paper here. If you had some kind of overhang or you're looking out from a garage or from a door, then you could have things on the top showing that that's close to you. But ultimately, the things that you're going to be drawing are going to be on the edges and the bottom of the page. So I'm going to start by drawing a house here. The rule for foreground is it's the things that are the closest. They are going to be on the edges of the work. You can reach out and touch them or easily walk to them. They are the biggest the most detailed, and you can see highlights. It's going to be the brightest for you because it's close. It's going to be easily understood. Now, you always have to consider where your light source is as well. So these things, the things that are closest to you are going to be the brightest, most detailed. But if your light source is far away back here, then your ground is going to be darker towards you and get lighter as it gets towards the light source. So I'm going to draw this big house and I'm going to remember to use my vanishing points. So these are all going to converge towards the vanishing point. So I'm not going to draw the whole thing just so I don't have too many marker lines. So here's my first house. It's super close. The next is going to be the midground. It's the medium distance. It's going to be halfway between the vanishing point and the edge of the paper. These are the things that you could run to or ride a bike to that are kind of far away, but you can still get to them without having to spend a great amount of time. So they're going to be medium sized. So if I'm doing a medium sized house, it might look like this. And I'm not doing anything in great detail. This is just to illustrate the p positions and the size of things. So I've got my house. Again, I'm going to do the vanishing points going towards, or the vanishing lines going towards the vanishing points. And I'm not going to do 
all the lines. But I just want to be able to show where these things are at. So the things that are in the foreground are going to be the biggest and closest to the edge. The things that are in the midground are going to be halfway between the vanishing point and the edge of the paper, and they're going to be medium sized. These things are going to be a little less detailed than what's the closest, and things are going to get a little darker. So you're going to use more grays to shadow with these images because they are a little bit farther away. And then finally, we have the things in the background. So the things in the background are the farthest away. They're going to be closest to the vanishing point. They're going to appear very small. These are things that you would take a car to or are on the edge of your ability to see. And they are going to have no detail or very, very little detail. And these are going to be the darkest or the most shaded. So you're going to be using blacks. So the things that are the closest, you're going to use tints on that are highlights. The things that are medium, you're going to use tonal. So you're going to mix with and the things that are farthest away are going to be shaded. So they're going to have a lot more blacks to them. So these are going to be very small. And these are going to be the farthest away. So the closer to the vanishing point, the smaller these things are going to be. So something to remember is that you don't want to put things directly on top of the horizon line because that's really far away. And if it's that far away, it's going to appear really small. So if I have a house that's really far away, it might look like this if it's on top of the horizon line. So when we draw things, we want to place them on the ground, which means it's going to be below the horizon line. So understanding where you're going to place your objects and the size of your objects is going to help your artwork look more accurate. So again, things in the foreground are things that are the closest. They are going to be easy to get to. You can just reach out and touch them or you can walk a short distance. They're going to be big, they're going to be detailed, and they're going to be tinted. And these are going to be placed on the edge of the paper. Things in the midground are going to be medium size. You can walk, uh, run to them, you can ride a bike to them. They're, so it takes a little bit of work to get to them, but you can still get to it. You're going to use tones on this, so you're going to add grays to this for shading. And then the things that are in the background are the farthest away. They're going to be closest to the vanishing point. It's something that you might take a car to or it will take you a long time to get to. They're going to be tiny in size. There's going to be little or no detail. And these are going to be the darkest or most shaded. You're going to add blacks to these. So this is the basics of using distance, placement, and size to illustrate perspective. So I'm going to use a time lapse to kind of show you how this can be done with this image that I've set up. So the next thing that I want to do is make sure that I establish my light source. So I'll just put this little circle to represent the sun. And then tinted means adding white. Tonal means adding grays. And shaded means adding black, blacks.
So this is what tint, tone, and shade looks like in a landscape. The things that are closest are going to be the brightest and most detailed. The things that are mid-ground are going to be uh, tonal or added grays to it. And then the things that are the farthest away or in the background are going to be shaded. So this is what distance, placement, size, and using different shading techniques can do for your perspective drawings. Thank you for your time and your attention. Do more, do better.